How's it going guys? It's been a long time since we've done a war video and I constantly get asked about a bunch of Nightmare War defense teams. So I wanted to share that with you today. We're going to go through four war monster defense teams and how you can beat them. So this is going to be kind of a two-fold video. One, it's going to give you great ideas to use on defense and then it's going to give you the solution to beat them. Now I'm not worried about that affecting people because war is in this very dynamic situation right now where no alliance should have 24 people with the exact same layout. That's not a thing where that used to be a thing, but with so many plug and play characters right now, with so many influential plug and play characters right now, they're all over the place. We got Scroll with Black Order, we got Scroll with Rebirth, we got Scroll with Secret Defenders, Scroll wherever. Apocalypse is doing the same thing, Nightcrawler's doing the same thing, Chavez is doing the same thing. Quicksilver's doing the same thing. Secret Defenders can be with Captain America for Friend of There's so many different versions of these teams that we're going to have to do a bunch of these. There's no one size fits all. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do this video at least once a week. We're going to introduce four new war monster defenses and how to beat them. Now, what I hope you guys can take away from this is you're going to be able to have some war defense ideas and then some more offense solutions if you see these in practice. I hope you enjoy the video and have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Oh, and let's give a shout out to today's sponsors, Bloodline Heroes Lithus. A big thanks to today's sponsor, Bloodline Heroes Lithus. This dark fantasy RPG game is the most unique gacha game out there. Utilizing the air system, you can mix and match different bloodlines to create whatever you want. Nothing's off the table. Werewolf Rangers, Dragon Mages, Orc Thunder Gods, Demon Tide Hunters, mix and match to create a champion of your desired gameplay. But don't sleep on the special Bloodcraft legendary characters earned exclusively through the Guild War mode where you and your friends will battle to conquer territories. Download the game for free right now using the link in the description below or by scanning the QR code in the top left corner if you're watching on PC, net yourself a free starter pack. Right now, Bloodline is introducing a new game mode, the Luxus Tournament. Players will deploy champions to win battles and events through various stages. This game has a twist though, with a tournament aura and champion suspensions, it's going to be different than the regular gameplay. If you make it through the qualifying stages, you'll find yourself in the knockout stage and then the finals. But don't worry if you can't make it through, because all players will find themselves in the wager event where you will place bets on who you think will take home the trophy and net yourself some great rewards. Bloodline wants to welcome all new and returning players with a special gift. The first 30 players to leave their account ID and username in the comment section below will receive a free legendary female succubus. This mage will carry you into the game. And don't forget to download using the game link in the description below or scan this QR code if you're watching on the PC to earn yourself a free starter pack valued at $20. What are you waiting for? Come join me and play Bloodline Heroes of Lithus today. All right, guys, this is going to be the first new nightmare defense people are seeing in their wars lately. It's going to be Secret Defenders with Apocalypse and a pre taunt but most importantly, Absorb Men, because he is a villain and he gets Deflex. This is going to be very important for this matchup. Now, a lot of the counters you think would work really, really good struggle a lot. So Undying versions, a lot of RNG because there's lots of perma kills on this team. Superior 6, there's lots of RNG on who's going to get ability blocks and who's going to get stunned and who's going to get rewound, of course. And so we ended up finding a very efficient counter, but also not very efficient. So it's going to be your War Dogs. This seems to be the most power-dependent matchup, not RNG-dependent matchup. Now, when you're trying to have sure wins in war, it's important to lean into power instead of RNG, unless you're absolutely desperate. The most important character on our team is going to be our Nakia, as is the case with most War Dog matches. And I like her as a straighter, a striker, because I'm having a power issue against my opponent's team. I have cherry picked my opponent's team. He has a three diamond apocalypse. I wanted to show the biggest apocalypse possible, but I had to get him to take Absorbing Man off of Fortifier because it wasn't getting through him. It wasn't showing how this match is supposed to play out. Now, so I am, I, I'm. I'm letting you guys know this is cherry pick, but hopefully in your matches, you're not seeing Gear Tier 18 1 Diamond Observing Mans, and you're not seeing three Diamond Apocalypses yet. As soon as people can get him up there, of course he's going to get up there, right? So keep that in mind, but this does seem to be the most effective counter by using a set set of moves, a, a plan out set of moves. So let's get in here and let's talk about it. We'll talk about the pitfalls, talk about why it works and where it works. So here's Absorb Man's big contribution to the team. The pre taunt means I cannot put Disrupt on Miss Marvel, which means I cannot get to the Robbie Reyes as quickly as I would like. But also, because he's a villain, Apocalypse is more likely to do Retaliates, which gives him Drain, 
and gives him speed up quickly, which can be a very big issue. Regardless, though, we need to use the Nakia special. This is going to take that taunt off. It's going to put me in stealth. And most importantly, it's going to give energy to Nakia and to Black Panther because we are going to use their ultimates turn one. Speaking of ultimates, we got to get safe ground on our team, so Black Panther 1 million is on deck, and he needs to use his ultimate on top of the Apocalypse, giving us safeguard. So we did get a retaliate at the Apocalypse straight away. That is most likely because of Zerg Men giving him a villain tag to work with. That's very important to note. We're going to use the Equia ultimate. This is going to push the Apocalypse into yellow, which activates his passive. It does a nice rewind, and it gives Equia offense up, which is helpful. Next, I need to use the Black Panther ultimate. This gives my team speed up. A part of me wants to do the special to give Nakia offense up, but it seems that we're able to get an extra turn, which means an extra ping, and that extra ping kind of outweighs what an extra or what the offense up was giving Nakia on the ping she got. You have to use the Shuri defense up here because when Apocalypse dies, Black Panther and Robbie Reyes, they're going to go nuts. And if you don't have defense up, you're going to be in trouble. So now let's go ahead. Let's get the ultimate off with Nakia. And you're not always going to have this turn. Sometimes it's going to be Black Panther. Sometimes it's going to be Black Panther 1 million. It all depends on who, Nik on who Hard Light rewinds. So you see Hard Light rewound our Black Panther 1 million and our Shuri. This is probably best case scenario. We're going to use the ultimate here. We're going to hope that it pings all the way over to Apocalypse. But even if it doesn't, Nakia's pings themselves are going to do a lot of damage to him. All right. So we're getting in some good work there. There's the extra ping. Now, I'm going to use the special, or no, I can actually go over here, and I can hit him directly. So, we're going to do this because we want the kill, or we can do the special here. It's going to do a rewind on the Apocalypse, letting our Black Panther go first. He can get the kill, and I'll do debuffs to the Robbie Reyes. There you go. Nikia got it done before Black Panther had the chance. That's good. So, now it's a race to take out the Robbie Reyes. So, let's go ahead. We'll start getting offense up on our team. Nikia is going to do some strips here, which is very important. And here is where the secret defenders come into play. This is why this team is so powerful. Because even if you can get through the apocalypse in a quick manner, those secret defenders, they're nothing to uh, take for granted, right? This crazy powerful. We got to go for the Robbie Reyes as quickly as possible. We don't want to let his passive go off, so we will make sure we do extra attacks on him to finish him off. With him gone, we go for the hard light, and we get some work in here. Okoye is going to die. So another thing I want to make sure people have in the back of their minds is level 100 is around the corner. People are much more likely to be leveling up their secret defenders and their apocalypse than they are their war dogs. You need to try and take this matchup no more than a punch up of maybe one or 200 and in live war. That is super tough to do. Now keep in mind, Black Panther a million special cannot be counterattacked if somebody is in stealth. That's why it's important to put your Nakia in stealth whenever you get the chance. Now we'll do this, and we should be able to kill that hard light and do a lot of good damage onto the Black Cat, especially because we lost the Koye, which means we're not able to strip her buffs off as quickly as we would like. Let's get a heal, let's get some of those debuffs off, and let's try and work down this Black Cat. There you go, we gave her slow. We're going to be able to strip some of her buffs off with the Nakia basic here. And hopefully our Black Panther 1 million is going to survive to do his ultimate and get a bunch of death boosts for us. Here comes some defense up. That's going to be helpful. Nakia pings are coming in. We got an extra charge because of the Shuri uh, special. And now we get to finish it off. So as you see, a lot of things went good here. We had to get the Absorbing Man to not have a Fortifier. This is going to be a punching dependent matchup, not RNG. But I wanted to share that with you because that is the option the top dogs are using right now. Another new commonplace war defense team is going to be your Heroes for Hire with Quicksilver. We have a built-in counter for these guys, one that is very foolproof, and that is going to be your P-Force. Now, this is going to cost you a lot in the, in the form of your counter sheet, but this is a guaranteed win. So I want to show why this works, uh, and I'm being clown in chat because I'm saying foolproof, and I just lost it because I did something very stupid. We'll talk about that. So this is a great example of when things can go bad for you. So... We see that the Luke Cage always gives defense up to the Quicksilver, but then he's going to give him another buff as well. In this case, it's immunity. Because he gave him immunity, I have to hit the Quicksilver with the Jessica Jones ultimate. We cannot let that Quicksilver have immunity, okay? In the case that Quicksilver is in the corner and you also have to hit Shang-Chi, that's a bummer, but just go ahead and do that. That does stop you from getting a lot of extra damage onto the Shang-Chi because our Nico is not going to flip his uh, defense up and his deflex because Jessica Jones is going to remove that. Um, 
if it's the case where he doesn't have immunity, go over here to the Colleen, use the Jessica Jones ultimate there. But because I want to show worst case scenario, I'm going to target the Quicksilver, okay? Once again, if Quicksilver gets immunity, you want to make sure he gets tagged by the Jessica Jones ultimate. It doesn't mean you have to target him to do this, but I will do it in this case. So here we go. We get out of the buffs off. It calls an assist from the highest damage. That's going to be my Spider Woman CC. This is an absolutely just destroyed Quicksilver at this point. He's got the defense down. I'm going to target him with the Nico ultimate. It's important to remember how Nico's ultimate works. It targets the primary target, the target with the highest life, and the target with the highest damage, and it gives them trauma and disrupt. The disrupt is super duper important here. And then we got a bunch of other attacks we get to throw at the Quicksilver. Another thing to remember is that Luke Cage can give Quicksilver speed up. And that's why P-Force is the foolproof method. Because no matter which buff Quicksilver gets, if he gets the interrupt, or sorry, the disrupt, we can just take it off him with Jessica Jones. If he gets the speed up, it doesn't matter because all of our characters go before him. All we need to do is kill him before he gets to go. And because we got the Nico debuffs on him, that trauma and that disrupt, it's going to be a very, very easy thing to do. So let's go ahead and let's get that done. Let's throw the Photon Special at him. That's going to get him killed. And now because I want Shang-Chi to start bleeding out, it's perfect situation right there. Uh, it's already doing its job. Um, nothing else really matters right now. So in the interest of just getting one Death Proof off, let's get an Ability Block on the Scarlet Witch. Now, <laughs> the reason I lost my last match is because I actually killed the Shang-Chi for no reason whatsoever I killed him. Very, very odd move on my part. Uh, instead, what I'll do this time is I will throw this ultimate at the Luke Cage. Let's get him to start bleeding off his charges. Yeah, I don't know why I killed the Shang-Chi because then he revived and and then Shang-Chi does Heroes for Hire stuff, right? So don't do that. Make sure you still follow the regular rules for Heroes for Hire, but killing that Quicksilver is going to be the thing that makes this match more foolproof. Shang-Chi, let's go ahead and we'll just basic him out so that he's gone at this point. And now it's just us versus these three Heroes for Hire and they're not going to do nothing. They ain't going to do nothing. Let's get him out of here. And then let's go look at the other counter, which has some pitfalls. And we'll talk about what those pitfalls are. All right. So this is going to be a secondary counter to Quicksilver Heroes for Hire that a lot of people are using. But there are some problems with it. Most particularly is when Quicksilver gets which buffs. So Luke Cage is the first character to go here. And if he gives Quicksilver speed up, counter, or immunity... It can be a big problem now, that didn't happen here in the corner you can see what happens when he gets one of those buffs right out of the gate so what we can do now is we can just go full tilt we needed to ability block the misty knight and now we just go full tilt we're gonna do as much damage as we can we want to get that shang chi into yellow we want to get quicksilver's passive popped we're gonna throw the whole kitchen caboodle at them so there's quicksilver's passive and this should be shang chi into yellow as well that's great and now i'll do a rewind you know what i'm actually going to go over here and i'll target scarlet witch to make sure i hit that misty knight as well you cannot rewind quicksilver but here's the thing because quicksilver didn't get immunity or speed up i'm able to stun him here now i mentioned another debuff the other debuff is counter if Quicksilver got counter from that Luke Cage he would counter the Omega Red special because Misty Knight is positioned where she is and then Omega Red wouldn't take his turn here Shang-Chi would go first and Shang-Chi will obliterate your face speaking of Shang-Chi obliterating your face you want to make sure he's either dead or ability blocked because we went full tilt he's bled out all his charges we're able to go ahead and drop the bomb on him and this is going to get him and Quicksilver killed and you see everybody else is soon to follow so this is another counter but just know there's literally three debuffs that can make this go absolutely horrible like you saw in that bottom uh corner now the immunity on Quicksilver is recoverable because you can use the Silver Samurai Taunt and then Quicksilver is going to hit Silver Samurai twice. Normally because Silver Samurai is going to be resisting losing his uh, Taunt. Now, you're still then able to use the Omega Red Ultimate. You can still get that Shang-Chi dead and then you just got to work through the Quicksilver. Quicksilver getting speed up on spawn, that's a different story. And Quicksilver getting counter, that's another different story. You really got to slow play the counter. This, I think, is would be a last resort counter for me. I'm definitely not in love with this one. Let's go talk about one other option. 
A third, and in my opinion, more reliable counter is going to be your Pegasus team because it doesn't matter which buffs Quicksilver get. Instead, it really just matters does Rescue die. So we'll hide Rescue in a corner. We'll make sure Iron Man is in the opposite corner. So if she gets low, he's going to reflexively taunt and that could save the day. As long as Rescue doesn't die, this becomes an absolutely slugfest. Now, what I'm showing you right now is actually a punch down. It's about a 300k punch down, which could and probably will be very common for you guys. In your Heroes for Havoc Quicksilver matchups, you're probably not going to be facing off against Gear Tier 18, Colleen, Misty, and Luke Cage. Maybe Gear Tier 18, Shang-Chi for DD6, probably Gear Tier 18, Quicksilver. The good news is Quicksilver doesn't seem capable of killing Rescue in two shots, even if he hard targets her. In this case, it looks like we might lose, we're going to lose nobody here. And so this is going to be very easy to win. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the Kestrel Ultimate on the Quicksilver. That brings them just next to death. Now I'll use the Ultimate. This is going to go ahead and take that Death Proof off. It's also going to give Defense down. And then we're going to get a kill from that. And from here, Rescue is going to do what Rescue does. This is why this matchup wins. Rescue takes all those debuffs off, does a giant heal, gives you speed up. And from here, we just start ripping through the team. Like, it's, it's not even... It's not even an issue against this opponent who does have a really big Shang-Chi and a really big Colleen and a really big Misty. Yeah, we take a lot of damage, but Rescue is just constantly healing us back. And in the case somebody does die, which hasn't actually happened to me in all of my testing, Rescue is able then to get energy and bring them back. Like, it's such a powerful team. You start doing basics, you get energy. It's, it's crazy how good they made the Pegasus team after we bitched and complained about it. Not so, I maybe mean, we should keep doing that, right? We should keep complaining uh, till all the teams are great and we have theory crafting out the wazoo, or maybe we shouldn't because then the newest team will always be best, and that's not a healthy place to live either. But as you can see, this is a very, very good counter as long as things don't go catastrophically bad. I think it's much more likely things go bad in the Weapon X matchup than in this particular matchup. All right, whenever we get a new good team in the game, people throw them on defense maxed out. They jam a Chavez in there. They call it a day, and it gets a lot of wins. So the extreme team with Rogue and Chavez over Sunspot and Cyclops is actually a very interesting team. And yet again, our P-Force comes in handy here. So this is going to be a 200k punch-up. Now, I did notice there are some moments of RNG here, but... At the end of the day, it comes down to Jessica Jones cleansing everything over and over and over again and just absolutely crushing the enemy. So what happens here is we get a stun. Now, if that stun actually goes on to Jessica Jones and lands through the Jessica Jones res uh, resist, that's kind of problems. If it doesn't, then Jessica Jones can use her special here, and then we are in good control of the match. Rogue is going to go first because not only did Chavez give speed to Rogue, but... Nightcrawler gave speed bar to her too. So we're stuck using the Nico ultimate here, which is still going to get us a uh, trauma over there on the gambit because he's going to have the highest life because it targets the primary target rogue. She's already taken care of. Highest life is always going to be gambit at that point. Here's where you need to look out. If rogue is not in a corner, I don't know if I'd use P for us here because this special from Spider-Woman is gonna put an offense down on the Gambit, which is gonna protect my characters because his pings are gonna be absolutely brutal, right? And if he doesn't have that offense down, I think if you're doing too big a punch up, it could become a problem. In this case, I don't need to worry about it. Now Gambit, he's got the defense down, he's got the disrupt, he's got the uh, trauma. So I'm not even worried about his uh, passive tricking me out. Now I have heard if you do need to do giant punch ups here, Take Captain Marvel out and throw in Quicksilver. I could see how that would be absolutely beneficial, but we're gonna be okay the way we are now. I'm gonna I'm always I'm never gonna use the ultimate with Jessica Jones unless it's not into Rogue here. If I'm stuck on Rogue, I'm gonna do the basic. We're gonna RNG our way into some more energy and see if we can get that to work. Uh, we'll go ahead, we'll throw the ultimate from Spider-Woman here. And you see our photon, she does get pretty low here, and it is very, very scary. Jessica Jones is gonna cleanse that again. That gives defense up and the uh, immunity to our uh, Photon. We get a nice little heal out there with the new Nico special when that rework happened when P-Force was introduced. 
Using the Captain Marvel special does give us speed bar. We've now successfully pushed the rogue, which means we're able to start working down on this gambit. This is going to kill the gambit. It's going to put blind on the other two characters. Of course, Forge is going to do a bunch of nasty healing and everything like that. He's going to be our next kill target. So you see, it did look sketchy for a couple seconds. I'm going to use the ultimate now because it's on Forge, not on Rogue. It looked sketchy for a second, but with the power of Jessica Jones and the new A-Force on turn healing, we get through it with minimal minimal concern. And with all the energy that's been going all over the place, we're getting to spam a lot of our abilities uh, I'm assuming we're going to get to do some sort of devastating ult here in a moment, because that's just kind of the way P-Force works now. All right. There goes some more energy. Here comes the special. This is a really powerful special from Spider-Woman. Ability to block plus defense down to the Rogue, which lets me turn my attention back to the Forge. Now, you want to kill Forge, but also his ultimate is on like a 40,000 turn cooldown. So once he uses it once in a five-person matchup, you're not too, too worried about it. And then no, nothing's left but the Nightcrawler. So you see this is going to be a good counter here. But again, if you need to face off against Superior 6 on the defensive side, you kind of want to keep your P-Force. For the same reason P-Force worked here, we keep it for the superior 16 which is i think a much more difficult team we do have another option for extreme team which we're going to look at right now now underworld is going to be another answer to the extreme team with chavez you'll notice this is a much bigger punch up this is about a 440k punch up just like with the omega red team into the heroes for higher quicksilver there is a tad bit of rng but not nearly as crazy as that matchup so the rng we're talking about is right here who does green goblin try and get these uh, dodges off. In this case, he got the dodges off of Gambit and off of Rogue. Whoever we put the special on is going to attack the Forge, put the ability block over there, and that's going to be really nice. In this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put the ability block on Rogue. I don't want to have to deal with her taunting. She's going to go ahead and give it to the Forge. So now I don't need to worry about his alt either. I just want to kill them both as quickly as possible. Let's get that blind up there. And now, unfortunately for Rogue, she tried to taunt, but then she immediately got dropped down. We're going to start working on this Gambit. And you can see, not only is this a cheaper counter that works at a bigger punch-up, but it's a lot faster than the A4's team, too. We're not sitting here for nearly as long. I'm going to try and get back on this Forge. He's kind of the kill target that I prefer. Uh, Nightcrawler is going to go soon. He's going to do a bunch of nasty stuff. And if we can have Forge down before that time, it's going to be very beneficial. I'll take the Rogue out now. She's got defense down. We're just going to follow the debuffs from here on out. And there you go. Just our world of mini bad guys against these two. That doesn't mean you're going to auto win. We really need to use the special from Kingpin so that we do have safeguard leading into that Nightcrawler uh, ultimate. But here you go. This is definitely going to be uh, an efficient counter that you can use on bigger punch-ups. I keep ending the videos because it takes like a full minute to kill, quick, to kill Nightcrawler after that. It's really annoying. <laughs> Look at him. Look at his, his passive procs. He's just a one-man crew. He's sticking in there, doing the best he can. We're doing... Are we healing him? Are my minions healing him? There you go. Green Goblin, just like Red Goblin, throwing fire all over the enemies. Just kidding. I have no idea what Red Goblin's kit looks like. And there you go. We got through the Nightcrawler. Jeez Louise. All right, to wrap this video off, we're going to do a scroll very We're joined by the War Master General himself, Mikael. These Thunder Thighs will kill. So, uh, there's lots of scroll variants out there in the world right now. I know it is all over the place, and this one is one that's been popping up recently if you're facing big alliances or people that invested big into their Black Order. Or if somebody's trying to get a discount team with their scroll, and then you undermine it, and you go in and you drop an L to it. But... Black Order Scroll does have two very good counters. We're going to showcase both of them right now, starting with Undying and Hive Mind. It's actually going to be with Void Knight and Venom here. Now, there is a particular turn order for this one, but it's not too complicated. It's easy to follow, and it gives you another reason to build up Void Knight and Venom, who are my two favorite Hive Mind characters so far. They seem awesome. So what's going to be important to note here is your Zuggernaut size does matter. That's right. Size does matter, fellas. I'm sorry. It hurts my heart, too. 
but you need your Zuggernaut to be able to survive at least that opening attack, that Skrull special and the Thanos attack. Because after that, you will get enough Greg deaths, and then he's going to be able to revive. But if he dies before that, it's problems. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We'll use the special. It's going to put slow on everybody. It's important. It's fueling that Skrull ultimate, which we're trying to avoid. But it's also putting slow on the other characters. Let's just get ahead of them. We're going to Void Knight the character in the middle. It doesn't matter who's in the middle. We just want to pull them in, get the ability block up there. And what that's going to do is it's going to set us up for an insane debuff spread with our Zuggernaut. Your Zuggernaut gets DPS per charge. So when he does his ultimate and spreads these bleeds, it is absolutely devastating. So you see a bunch of people die. They start taking their turns. They die. And this is where you can have an issue. This is where I just needed to restart. If you spread here, scroll alt, you'll probably still win, but it's going to be ugly. Instead, you want to basic with your Hella. That's going to let your Venom go before the scroll alt, and then you hit him with one of these. You hit him with the ability block of doom. So scroll is stuck using his basics, and as soon as he's done taking that turn and he drops the ability block, Zim is going to follow up with another one, and from there, we're going to quickly make work out of this scroll. And that's one of the counters. Let's go look at the other counter. All right, this is going to be your secondary counter for Skrull Black Order. It's going to be your New Avengers. New Avengers are an amazing counter for a lot of Skrull teams. As long as they don't have a pre-taunt, pre-taunts kind of throw a wrench into the bar. But the Black Order one is also not as obvious. Because Cull has more damage than Skrull at certain levels. This one diamond uh, Cull actually has more damage than Skrull. So our objective is actually to push the scroll. We want him to drop his passive, and then we want to be able to uh, Coulson pull him out of stealth. So I'm gonna do just that. We're gonna go ahead, we'll use the thing special here. That's gonna knock the scroll low, his passive procs the first time, so we don't gotta worry about it happening again. This is where Ronan gets a little rewind, which is a little annoying, but it's gonna be okay at the end of the day. We'll use the ultimate from Mockingbird. And now because we let the scroll use his special, he has offense up, and the Cull, or sorry, the Coulson uh, ultimate will go where we wanted it to go. It's gonna go on the scroll. The scroll's gonna use his basic. Now, this can flip your offense up on your Ronin. However, normally it's enough that you still get the kill. So let's go ahead, we'll use the ultimate from Ronin. As long as your Ronin is built up properly, you still get the kill and you get to go on from there. New Avengers to the moon, if you love war, is the move. Me and Mikael are here to tell you that. Mikael, do you have any parting words for everybody? You heard it here first. Oh. That's right. He said build up your new Avengers. Have a good day, everybody. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.